Sylvia Lassandre knew something was wrong the moment she gave birth to her daughter. Once, you know, I heard her cry and Michael had um, taken her to me, you know, and I'm laying there and I just looked at her. That was the last, the first and last time that I ever looked at my daughter into her eyes, you know, or into her, you know, just basically look at her. I, after that, I knew something was wrong. I felt as, oh my God, what did I just do? I made the biggest mistake in my life. Her response was so severe, she even spoke to a nurse in the hospital about giving her daughter up for adoption. I didn't, you know, didn't have that bond, didn't feel anything. Things didn't get better when she took her daughter home. She didn't want her daughter near her. She was depressed and angry at her husband. Couldn't sleep, yet couldn't get out of bed. Then things started to fall apart. I took a nap, and Melina was in her bassinet in, in my room, and uh, I had a nightmare, which seemed so real. I had a nightmare that I had um, gone over to the bassinet and, um, you know, smothered her. So in the um, middle of that, I woke up, and I was literally wet from sweat. And I was so afraid to walk over to the bassinet to see what I have done, because it felt so real. When I finally walked over and saw that she was okay, I ran over to uh, my bed and there was uh, some sleeping pills that I had um, and I emptied all the contents on the bed and I was about to um, swallow the pills, a handful of pills. At that moment, Melina just sighed and I just cried. You know, um, just couldn't believe that I was going to do the unthinkable. So um, at that point, I called my mom who lived about 15 minutes away and uh, she heard it in my voice. And I said, Ma, I just can't do this. And she just immediately said, where's the baby? And I said, she's sleeping. Is she okay? Yes. And she's like, don't you do anything stupid. Promise me. Before she would hang up, I had to promise her because, you know, it's a bond that my mother and I have. You know, my word is everything. And I promised her. And she arrived there in about eight minutes. She was flying. You know, it's a little Sicilian lady. I could imagine her going over Skyline Drive with all its turns and she ran up the staircase, picked up Melina, and held my hand, and we all, you know, both of us just cried. And about 10 minutes later, um, Michael, I heard Michael's footsteps come up. Uh, my mother had called Michael, um, and he had all chef clothes, and she just grabbed his hand and said, you know, everything's okay, Melina's okay, Melina's okay, uh, Sylvia's okay. And um, she looked at Michael, and she said, I'm going to take the baby home with me you know, as long as she needs to be with me. And I, I trust you with my daughter's life. You know, um, someone has to be with Sylvia basically 24 seven, which, which what happened, you know, it was family and friends, brothers, aunts, cousins, always around me. Um, so that was a very touching moment and a scary moment. You know, at that point I felt like I, I couldn't care for her. You know, I couldn't care for myself. Melina stayed with Sylvia's parents for nine months. During that time, Sylvia was under constant supervision from an extended group of family and friends and never allowed to be alone with her baby on visits to her mother. She was placed under a psychiatrist's care and on medication. As she describes it, her supporters put their lives on hold to help her recover. I remember sitting on the couch with my brother because he had a newborn also. Uh, Lara, who was a month old. She was born in July, Melina was born in August. And we're both sitting there and my mother plopped the baby on me. I was, we were watching TV, you know, John is holding Lara and Melina is uh, on my chest and my mother's standing. I could see her from the corner of my eye and she's standing like a, towards the end of the couch, the other end. And we're watching TV and uh, in my mother's house we had like 25 TVs and no, none of the TVs were less than 70 inches big. So it was like a cinemaplex in every room. And uh, Melina is just fussing. You know, she's trying to push, you know, off. This is a couple of months. She's probably about two months old. She's trying to push off, you know, and just fussing. Not crying, but just to do something. And I know she wanted me to look at her and I just wouldn't give in. So finally, when she kind of pushed her little neck and I looked at her and we just made that eye contact, she just sighed. She went, hmm, and put her head on my shoulder and uh, she slept. She just, uh, it was like a miracle, small miracle, but every miracle is a miracle. 
And I remember looking over to my mother and she's crying. And I looked over to my brother John and he's emotional. And I kissed her forehead and I said, okay, mommy's here. I know, I hear you, I see you and I feel you. And it was like the gates just opened. You know, this child, as much love she was receiving from her grandparents, her aunts, her uncles, her friend, you know, friends, um, she wanted to be loved by her mother. She wanted to know, hey, mommy, are you here? You know, because I'm here. And uh, it was just a beautiful feeling. It was, I will never, ever forget that feeling. You know, her smell, what she was wearing, her little fingers, how they just um, released. Everything in her body just released, as well as mine. And that was, I think, the road to recovery. At one point, Sylvia thought she would never tell her story. I remember when I was recovering, I would never want to speak about it again. I was so embarrassed. But I would never do that to somebody else, because if I can help one mother, one person, I'm helping a family. I'm helping a husband, a child, the grandparents, the uncles, the siblings. So I would not, um, for me to never talk about postpartum depression, this turning my back on these women, and I won't, I refuse to turn my back on, on, on women that are suffering like this. Um, you know, to embrace them and say, hey, it's going to be okay. I know what you're going through and you will be okay. That, that means everything to me.